Hello everyone, this is Relax and Panic and I'm Most Evil Life Form and this is the finale of season 6 of Ruby. So as always, if you want to see our reaction, go down into the descriptions, follow the links, replace the circumflex dot parts with real dots and enjoy. Once you've done, feel free to come back here and hear our thoughts about this episode. So see you soon. Welcome back. <laughs> Hello again for those who came back. Now, um, well, finale. I mean, we were. It's pretty clear it was a finale now. Um, what to talk about? I mean, we we possibly the have fight. to talk a bit about uh, Atlas. We will have to talk about the fight. Um, yeah, let's start with that one. Right. Let's start with the fight because it was in first. Um, okay, it, it was a bit of mix. Oh, uh, was it though? Yeah, not yeah, for me. yeah, it was okay. Um, <laughs> in the meaning of. Uh, the Atlas personnel fought. They did not run away. They did not chicken out. They really fought. Um, there was this melee fight of all the flying vehicles against the, the flying grims yeah. outside of the city. Um, there were no automatic gun stations, but we were kind of waiting for. I mean, we had it on the train, so why do we not have it in Atlas yeah. defense bases? Some ground-based artillery, something like that, was a bit missing. Instead, they went with their... Um, Shields and planes and... Yeah, and that's it. And it is super... To be honest, it's very weak if you just have main we one main weapon and basically nothing else as yeah. a defense system. Yeah, that was a bit, that this, was a bit weak as, from the setup of the defense. I mean, I, I, I need to admit, I was uh, quite unhappy with the whole setup anyway, because... If you have a shield system which can be basically taken out by... <laughs> this was so disappointing in the sense of... We, 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 we will talk about it later, but we see it in the picture right now. This is what Atlas is. And as a... High out, tech. Yeah, outside, tech especially an outside military position. This is like, what did you do? Did you just give them the weakest... Stop. Stop. I mean, I've seen this concept of shield emitters in the past. The idea that um, the shield is, you have like a, a, the emitter itself and it goes outside. But that always means between the emitters is a shield and the emitter itself is not def uh, defended by the shield. That's is, just a stupid design. It is. And then you need to remember, they are able to make prosthetics, which are basically lifelike. Like uh, they hey. can replace eyesight, but they cannot build something which protects the basically emitter. And we have seen that they have the option for an... Um, I mean, it's easier to Localized make... Localized shield. So yeah, yeah. It, it's easier to make an emitter like that, which goes just outside and it is like a guarding fence between mm. the emitters. It is the easiest version, I understand that. But we have seen by the mech that they have to, an option to um, project it when she used the hand mm -hmm. and the shield was in front of it. Something like that. You It goes out from the water and you just have the emitter who projects the shield in front of it and just put multiple next to each other. So that was weak um, and uh, simply stupid. But as I said, I've seen this concept of emitters in other um, games and movies already it before. It does make it better though. I always questioned this idea because it's just ineffective. It is it just is, ineffective. It is like, why would you do that? That's uh, just... It is against um, uh, secondary damage, uh, against collateral damage. If there's like um, shooting and one of the shoots goes haywire, you defend the city. So it's more like a, like the idea of a wall, which is not but, really but effective. I was about to say it's still not effective. It can be taken out so easily. This is this is uh, that the thing. It is just against collateral damage, because as soon as whoever wants to get through the wall. And he has the slightest hint of intelligence, which this Grim had not. He just did area damage. Um, you would be like, huh, oh, a shield wall. Okay, I shoot the emitter, shield wall down, thanks. I mean, everyone would do that. So here it was just the Grim was not clever, but he just did um, a huge attack, which yeah. then accidentally hit the emitters. But um, yeah, that's the one thing. And I think, I'm pretty sure everyone there um, realized we saw that and didn't yes. like it. And... I'm pretty sure many, many others um, compliment, complimented on that, commented on that. So that's one part. The other thing is they stopped the flying Grim by flying there themselves and put them into an air fight. Back to why are there no basic guns? Never you will have 
the same chances in a fight as a Grimm who is born with wings and born, yeah. is you know it just has more maneuverability mobility. and everything and even if you would do it then you wouldn't go into a direct fight you would try to shoot them from afar with your rockets with your guns but what we've seen so far is they were in and just like a tie fighter <laughs> versus x wing yeah, yeah. fight it, so uh, it was uh, not efficient again um so and the missing ground guns so in many many ways this atlas base felt incredibly weak and um it they... somehow did not did not do justice of what was built up before exactly. about atlas military it just didn't do it justice and yeah. it felt like, like maybe it was because of the build up that it was so powerful and and stuff like that that it's actually contributed to the fact that this is now very weak so if you would have not overstated it so much it wouldn't be feeling so drastic in a it's difference it's not it's not that they but... are weak um the mech is strong the general idea of having uh, shield emitters is good um the um the uh, planes they have with rockets it on board does... are good but they are just inefficiently used it's also not efficient against what they were actually supposed to do there yes so yeah. it's, it's also why does this mech have a drill build in it if it would be a tool for mining yeah oh. a, a regular no a regular weaponized mech wouldn't have a drill because a drill yeah. is for drilling yes it it's was, not really a weapon a drill yes it's a tool we have seen drills in other series and movies. Why ever people like the idea of chainsawing people, which, by the way, doesn't work. The chainsaw saw will just get stuck. Of drilling through people, which will possibly not work either very good. Um, instead of just using, I don't know, a warhammer. Um, which would have been an option if she would have something like that it in her hand. It would have been making more sympathy if she had other weaponry in her other arm than a drill. Yes. Yes. You know, like... She... As I said in the last uh, comment section, um, in a melee, this mech would have been completely inefficient because the shield wouldn't work. And um, uh, a Grim, with ha which has like a snake-like ability to entangle you, would destroy you instantly. And from what we've seen, the damage she received by small weapons, every Grim would just be like that mm -hmm. and you would lose an arm. So it, it just it doesn't feel like it was very well thought through. Yes. It was like thrown in and okay, we just roll with it. Yeah. And not really it that didn't feel that there uh, like we men uh, you mentioned it before that there are two, two different teams responsible for mm. fight scenes and uh, this just really felt like okay, we just throw it in there. There were other fight scenes which were much better uh, also including the Atlas military which felt yeah. more believable, more more real in the sense of this this mm. yeah the thing here is this mix of um inefficient techniques inefficient weapons um from a high capacity kingdom um and the very very poor tactical and strategical use of what they have mm. because every real setup soldier um commander general whatever would have seen those flyers coming along the big one coming along and he would not send in his troops to encounter them on the sea. Sure, you want you don't want them in the city. I can understand it, but instead set up like a perimeter defense, uh, shoot did with we, the rockets as long as possible. Did we also see a previous like like a dome, uh, a protection shield like a dome? That was what I was expecting over the city. To be honest, did we had something like that? Didn't we have that in Beacon? Not sure. I really am not sure. I'm not sure. Well, however, that's the one thing. Um, by the way, why was there no Atlas ship in the air? Sure, everything was called back, but they still have a big mech and everything. So I guess possibly normally there would have been one or two of the this capital ships uh, on top of the yeah. city, um, and they just called them back. I in was the also last surprised weeks. that they didn't have any water based. Base. Yes, uh, they're on the water. Why uh, do they have no ships? Right. Like, That's like, true. This was a like like a, like a warship or something like uh, that. Just this talking was, about uh, guns, we had this one traveling ship, not military, with a big gun on yeah, top of it, yeah. and multiple small guns. So they they are automatic weapons and stuff like that. One of those guns could have possibly endangered that Grim alone. And if uh, a passenger ship, who is meant to deliver passengers through uh, to another con uh, continent, has something like that, a military base especially the biggest military base of Atlas outside of the kingdom should have at least one of those guns. So it's just, 
I mean, the the, the, yeah. the, the, the the airplane they had, I don't think was a passenger ship, ship per se. Yeah. Because it was part of her air, um, of her, 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 her airplane armada, I would say, because she's saying, okay, if one, uh, if one of the, uh, of my ships is going missing, yes. it won't matter. Well, what's that about? No, I, I don't get the, what, what, what do you mean? That, that the ship they had was not a regular passenger ship. Yes, I know. I'm not talking about the rockets. I'm mm -hmm. talking about the passenger ship on the sea. Which yeah. fought against the sea dragon and yeah, yeah. shot it into pieces with one shot of the mega cannon. So this mega cannon or something similar yeah. was missing in the base. So to the fight at itself, um, apart from Atlas. So yes, they had their auras back. Um, at least some of them. Um, however, I have to give it to them that the aura of um, Ren and John depleted oh, very, very fast. And but John was damaged he was shattered yes um so it's in the mix it's they shouldn't have it back but at least it was not like we can be cloaked forever um yeah. i don't see the need to be cloaked i mean possibly because they flew through the fight that's the, okay the most reason. but the big one the thing did, is, didn't care about why them. the thing is why i think this was absolutely didn't matter she had the artifact yeah yeah and, and the, we could see we it. It followed before. her due to that. We had it before that they said we need to part from the train because the art the Grims are following the artifact. That's why they the relic, separate yeah. rated in the first place. And to say now, hey, let's cloak this airship where the artifact is on is like, yeah. And you could see when she was there um, flying before mm -hmm. the the Godzilla yeah, Grim. Yeah, it followed her. Um, it followed the and and they had the camera on the relic, so they they are aware of that. Mm -hmm. So it's not that Rooster Teeth missed that. That's the thing here. Rooster Teeth is aware that of that, and um, it just made no sense to cloak. Yeah. Uh, apart from the fact that they should, and it was not necessary. They could have sh shot and everything without being cloaked. The Grim was very much distracted by everything else. Um. So she is in front of him uh, with the help of Weiss, which is again cool because you can see the support effectivity of Weiss again. Um. Tries to get this emotions running. And I like that they um, put in Did pictures, you? still pictures oh. of the last seasons from season one to five. Things that happened, great moments. Um, I think even from the food fight, there was this moment they're standing next to each other. And even scenes we didn't see before. Sure. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, Ro uh, Summer Rose, uh, for example. Yes, and yes, I think yes. we have okay. never seen the father and Yang in, together. Right, yeah. in the, when she was very small. Well, we have yeah. seen her in very small, but not this very picture. Yes, yes, yes. And I think that all the pictures were redone. Could see that. It yes, was they, a were, very yeah, yeah. they were redone quality. to look fitting. Um, and it was nice because it um, gives us an insight on Ruby, what is important to her, mm -hmm. what she cares about. Not that there was much of a surprise. We expected her team, her father, her family, and so on and so forth, that they showed Summer Rose for the first time, frontal, looking very much like her yes, daughter. Basically, I mean, very, basically identical. Yeah, very, very like. Um, that was cool because that kind of gives the vibe that. Possibly we will see a bit now from her in the next season um, because they gave her a face now. Mm -hmm, so, that they uh, never that, did before. Yeah, so that means like, hey, this is her. Now you see her. Now we can work with her, you know? Maybe. Um, that she wasn't able to the first time, I like. So she's not the insta-kill Ruby. I was not like this is that she wasn't able the first time. It's just just she was not aware and she was not ready. It was basically yeah. the first try. Yeah. She was just not like she could it was not, not basically charged in, up yet. But to be honest, this attack was not like a short flash, but like we saw before, you know, which basically just harmed uh, Grim a little bit. You know, this glimpse where she was, I think, knocked unconscious before it could yes. completely unfold, and it still did a lot of damage. And this time it was like this. It was. Big, this Big attack. It was an explosion. explosion right? Normally she had like a cone the where she looks. To. Yeah, basically what it was nearly identical to the first time at Beacon. Basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah. this time the Grim was not completely completely petrified. Uh, well, I mean there, there are multiple reasons for that. Uh, one thing is she had quite a big of fight, her aura is broken as well, she's exhausted. Plus second with, Yeah, but plus there's with, no direct danger as as it was for she saw Pyrrha die. That's a complete different moment of emotional stress she had I there. don't think and so. In the this other, was 
she ha she saw Blake being killed in this moment if she didn't act. And here there was no no direct immediate danger. It was if I don't act now, those people behind me will die. No, if she um, don't act now, she will die. That's another thing. Um, but it is. She, this was no reflex out of her. This was a, I, I wanted, know, I need but to control. It, it was still, for me, it was like, if this wouldn't be that big, like, explosion-like ah, okay. thing, you know? If it would be just, like, either like a, a cone, small glimpse, yeah. a glimpse, something like that. So, hey, I had to concentrate that hard just to get out this much. Yes, yes. But by, by having this huge... You, which would theoretically be big enough to also affect the smaller grims and wipe yes, them out. Yes, Then I can understand that. It's just... The effect versus the results. I mean, it was stone completely, and it looked like it was complete stone, and yeah, then and it, it moved out of it, however. Right, however, this is working. Like, they have... Are, are Just they... the outer shield is outer part. And but then it should have, like, parts of his skin ripped yeah. off, and that didn't do it. I it mean, is... she's not building a stone wall around him. She's right. turning him into, into stone. stone. Yeah. This, this was... Then they, they should have done, in this case, instead of showing yeah. him complete stone, like that his lower half is stone and he cannot move. And then yeah, would be or, like, or oh, our well, okay. arm, arm is... And that he yeah, is something like ripped that. Ripped off and he is screaming and is enraged, something like that, yeah. weakened. And but the being complete stone and then breaking out of the stone, mm. by the way, by the way... I remember another Grim breaking out of stone and there was a dragon in the past from the mountain. So you could maybe argue that maybe he was turned into stone in the past by another Silver Eye user and then woke up again. But that leaves the question, what is the stone around him? And in this case here for this Grim. So he should have lost some parts of his skin no. and muscles when this he is, broke out. This, no, from the, the, in the past when he came out of the mountain, this was where he was sleeping. He yeah. was sleeping below there like dragons do in mountains. And always in Skyrim, they sleep below and, the ground. And, so what? and this just... Mm. Yeah, it felt like they, they... No, not felt. It was clear they wanted to give the commander this yeah, last attack. This, and she is now the savior of the people. She came around understanding that the girls did everything for good reasons. And she had to realize that she was wrong all the time. Uh, we discussed it last time. Um, it's okay... But I'm not happy with it because it is like, you know, the camper one. You know, you wait until someone else did weaken the enemy for you. Bullshit for me. Or that. I don't know if you heard it. <laughs> so, well, that's that. That's the fight. Right? Did I miss something there? I guess I not. I don't think so. Except that the people were like, yay, yeah, that they were that just we're not surprised. standing there. No, but also they celebrated and it was like nobody was like, what the hell? Yes, yes. They, they were not surprised at all. Every, like, okay, yeah, just... And that, that no one was running before was a bit surprising as that well. Too. Uh, because I mean, okay, there is probably not much to go, but don't they have some kind of bunkers? I yeah. mean, this is probably not the first time they have been attacked. Yeah. So I would assume that there is some kind of security or, or you know there should be like an alarm going in yeah, the city everyone move to your shelters in right, a calm right, and orderly right. way don't panic please no, so that we don't have any civilian or at least yeah strategy. some civilian shelters structures should mm -hmm. be there um and everyone would just be like oh yeah let's go there some would panic and run around some mm. tried to escape the city um so this mix but they were just standing on the street like oh my god we're being attacked what's going on and then just watching and then a little bit of applause so, and cheering. A fight, sure. As you expected, half of the episode. Um, not much of a surprise here, in my opinion. It might I thought it might have been a bit longer the fight, but it wasn't. And then we had the uh, now you can take the uh, the the birdie and, and yeah. fly away. Well, okay. And we had congratulating themselves on the airplane. Well, that was kind did. of we are good now, all with each other. They <sighs> commented on um, Oscar. So it's this. We had this. Um, the storyline, the story arc of having problems due to what we heard with Oscar and Ospin. And now in the end, we are fine again. And they even mentioned, okay, Ospin helped us. So he's, he's still over watching over, over us. us. So yeah, it's a bit... The whole, the whole uh, scene was super awkward for yeah. me, for me at least. It yeah. felt super, what, what is this? It is, yeah, it was this, like, this okay, thank you. I understand what you want to tell me. Can we now skip that? Um, like, like putting out again what each and everyone did that day. 
I mean, they, they saw it. Majority of them were there. Why do they have Let's to pet up, yeah. this on their backs now again? I mean, okay, I understand the, situ- the, 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 the scene between Crow and Ruby. That was basically that was the, the, the scene for me, especially when he was pausing before drinking. Or did he? Did yes. he, he, he did even... not drink. He put it. Uh, put, he lowered it. Okay, right, he lowered it. That's, that's why I said, he I did don't not know. Drink. We don't know if he drank. Or but it is, a, it is a bit off. Yeah, he's yeah. thinking about what he's doing again. That was the scene, but the rest was Somehow, whoa, whoa, whoa. it was just too much because we uh, that's the main problem here. I'm fine with that they um, like each other and that they are mm-hmm. fine with each other, and I'm okay with if they are telling themselves nice things. It is just the uh, contrast to the beginning where they are so upset about us yeah. and what happened, and now they're like, Well, we are all fine again. It's just this extremely high, and then it's like, Yeah, we are all friends instead of saying, I'm still not over that. Uh, but we will have to work together. So there's no neutral part. In. They're just like incre- incre- incredibly mad. And then just let's be friends. It's, it's also, I think, the dynamic of the dialogues, which which kind of puts me off. It feels mm. it just feels like, okay, this is not a natural thing which would occur it's between them. It's line that were put in their mouth. Right, right. It, would, yes. it doesn't feel natural. Yes, it's not in a normal interaction. That's the thing. It's like, feel like it. it feels a little, little bit like a therapy session. Everyone is sitting in, <laughs> in a circle there. Nah, in, in, come on, they're all sitting in this room and they're... They have to say I, nice things about, about each other. I was about to say there, there, were, in, there were basically uh, seats right and left of them, but all of them were sitting on the ground. Yeah, okay, that's another thing. Um, and just mentioning how huge those um, uh, those are. airships are. Basically nothing uh, in from it. the outside, it's okay, but from the inside, they are huge yeah. rooms. So, but well. And that's... probably cargo ships, all of them, because of you them. basically have nearly no seats. Yeah. So, um, and then they fly to. Atlas. So um, we've seen them arriving. There's this uh, city which we see on the top mm-hmm. with this, I don't know what it is, like a palace in the middle. Um, I guess it's the where the aristocracy lives. Um, family. The question is what those lines are there. The, are those lanes Rings. where you can drive upon? Probably. Is this some kind of defense sh- um, shield visible? I could even see that this is again a fight because the, the final ring is on the highest point and then there's a lower ring. Exactly. It's, it's bigger. Yeah. Like this, this whole thing feels so much like, okay... Down there, you can see the working class. You yes. see the fires from probably all the minings from and possibly the... a lot of faunas there. Yeah, in... and, yeah, and yeah. then right before the fire ends, so that they can breathe fresh, clean air, the nobility and the rich the upper people, city. Yeah, the upper yeah. city starts. I mean, we had this concept of a build-up, um, upper class, lower class, mm-hmm. very much. Um, is in many uh, series and movies and computer games. And I remember, I, I just tried to think about, there is one, um, but I don't know the name anymore, where the people down low live from what those from above throw into the trash. The trash goes down. Mm-hmm. Um, but then there's this concept of example where it is on Earth. We have just incredibly huge buildings, but each of them next to each other, there's like no space between. And if those who live on the highest of the building on on top of uh, in the in the upper parts they have fresh air and they have sunlight mm. and everyone else below it's just dark and the deeper you get the more smog you have the more waste you have the more crumbled everything is and, and it's a bit like that here in so. general this feels a lot like this very okay oh, that that the slums down there are very poor and very suppressed and yeah <laughs> I think this is this. I mean, this was hinted already before yes. and, and and discussed and everything. But I, I like think the concept. They it's will be cool. now. I think especially Vice will be confronted with yes. that. I think they will have to go down there somewhere because they cannot that land up there. That would be cool. I would like that if I, they have to go through the slums first. They have to. They have to. And I think that will also be a motivation for Vice to to actually really return and to be the heir of the family. To I mean, she in many around. she she did a lot there already, but. She will get more motivation. She will get even more background on what her family did. She knows most of it, but it's a different thing to know it because you heard or you read. And it's another thing to see, see it. it. And I think it would be cool if Rooster Tees would do that and send them down there. And, and with Blake, you would have access to the Faunus as example. I mean, she is by she should by now be a number known the, by the Faunus. I mean, the, I mean, uh, Vice will probably need to hide. Yes, yes, yes. around there and... 
yes, she, died. This, uh, she stood up against her. her father. We know that, but it's not oh, out in the open enough. Yeah. They actually think they don't. They don't even know that this would not go yeah. outside of the yes. inner circles. Why and should they? Yeah, this this feels like the. I will. I will. Or I hope that Rooster Teeth manages to bring this through, and just not brushes it over. To be honest, and they are just in the upper city, and it's never mentioned. That would be sad because this is a very cool option to what they already had in the past a bit show this problem of um, good living upper class men rich aristocracy mm. and the fact that they just don't see what is wrong in their society against the lower classes struggling for survival working for the others yeah. while Especially never reaching they are displayed as the good as the police as the perfect yes. you know and and actually they are far from that and that their civilization is thriving off and and on their wealth uh, wealthiness and their technology is being paid by a price which is basically not justifying the cost. Which is a question, right? Um, I mean, you could always argue um, that it is necessary so that mankind survives against the Grim. But there we always have the problem. Um, what is the price you're worth, you are, you're willing to pay for whatever thing? So, yeah, well, and on top of it, um, when you look above the uh, upper city, we have the fleet. So the whole and the fleet Lord on lights. Of, I like that. Touch. Yes, uh, the whole fleet of Atlas gathered. Um, I mean it's quite a bit of ships, but I kind of expected more. Um, but we will see. Uh, and they are waiting for an attack, which we kind of knew because um, Tyrion and Watts went there, and it felt like they. I mean, we know that Salem wants to attack there. That's something I we know. I don't. I think that this is something they are aware of. I, I, what I think is that they are basically defending against everyone. Currently everyone mm. is their enemy. So it's not because of Salem and something, but it's fitting because she just created her army with flying apes. Yeah, but yeah. how did they know that? On the other yes. hand, it's, it's very clever that she creates flying creatures because she knows she just can't get there by flying. Yes. So what I see additionally is uh, the upper city is flying. Um, it is bound to the ground with those, I think, like cables. Mm -hmm. um, I'm pretty sure they need I, dust for for floating like that. For so, me, it's not that it's being held down. For me, it's this is where the whole the mining stuff goes up. Yes, yes. And the, the whole results, not just not to keep it bound to earth. I, I think, think it's both. They... It's it's no, it will not float endlessly. It's just in this height, but that it doesn't drift left uh, side, right side. I think they can control and it otherwise. Um, I would like. Uh, as an option for somewhere in the future seasons, doesn't have to be next one, that this whole city is flying somewhere. And um, I, I could also see that too, and that the whole uh, like lines down there are detachable, and that it yeah. can fly to other cities and or other mine cities and oh, gather it otherwhere. That's an even better idea because that has a lot of this idea of the whole country is a slave. Everyone yeah. living on the ground is the workforce mm. and the aristocracy just flies with its city mm -hmm. um, where Above to it. the resources it needs or maybe with multiple cities smaller one when you have your one um, count I mean, you have a small floating city and yeah. this is just a major one I mean this is that's probably, a cool idea but it's probably not a case because uh, otherwise this could also be a yeah. chance that it's not there but it would be a cool idea for if this would be possible but I don't think that it's the case and you could make such cool movies out of it yeah. like you know the mining ground mm -hmm. everything is like it's bad but at least that then you have the alarm the dong 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 oh no the capital is arriving mm -hmm. the capital is hide, arriving hide, the, the, hide the children that are not allowed <laughs> hide the resources we need for ourselves um, put away like the that. weapons uh, hide the the pamphlets of the faunus <laughs> and whatever you know stuff like that that could it's a bit like um uh, what is this with Ken and Everdeen, the movie as example? Hunger Games. Hunger Games. It's like this idea. So this whole society can be an incredibly cool thing to use for a season or two um, to bring in and, philosophical questions. And this is where I was like, uh, is the next one actually the final one? Because we've never seen, first of all, Salem take action herself. Yes. That true. she's now do, taking uh, going there personally. And I am still like, okay, there is still, this is not, this is, would be the second artifact, which is there, there are other artifacts and it just feels like, okay, Salem already entering the stage in a fight, but, Seems and, and like she already sent Watts and uh, Tyrion, Tyrion there, in, uh, there which yeah. is like, I thought they were, are now the one who needs to be in charge of this. 
Mm. But then she's... And what I was surprised too is that Mercury was actually so surprised to see her do this. And her abilities. Yeah, he he mm -hmm. was terrified. He was yes. actually, you could see in his face that this was shocking to him. Well, he never saw her create something. But I mean, they I mean they saw what they she she did terrible things before. They saw yeah. her power and such. Yeah. Why is it spe specifically this so terrifying for him? This was what I was not quite understand. I was expecting that he saw how she's turning people, for example. Yes. Something like this, where they would feel the the this. Just, danger just for themselves yes. yeah and but this was just okay she is there uh, was a grim born and she changes it yeah uh, that, it. that's yeah. the thing i mean she is the queen of the grim we always refer mm -hmm. to her like that and it she should be that he's her. aware of that that this means she creates the grim um i mean that they come out of the pool by themselves and it's not her creating them why should he know so for him she's the queen of the grim they Listen to what she says. She's able to control them. So why shouldn't she be able to change them? Especially this um, is, uh, if she's able, able to do that, this is the worst time to actually do that. Because right now the air fleet is gathered at Atlas. Yeah. It's like, you would have done this before when some of them were, for example, at the time when they were at Beacon. Mm -hmm. This would be a better time. Right now every um, airship is there. For defense, the, the other expecting thing is, an attack. Yeah, the other thing is, however, I mean, we don't know. Maybe she's she's clever and surprises everyone and goes to Vecchio instead, right? That could be, a, and Atlas is not there and mm -hmm. might be an option. She can fly, so what? Maybe um, it's actually how, even uh, defense, like, okay, they need to go leave parts yeah. of Atlas. Or I mm -hmm. question her wisdom when it, not in the, I mean, it is the character. She's upset now, so she's possibly not thinking logically. Um, she's so but old. She was upset why, so many yes. times. Why is she moving out? Because right now she is the puppeteer behind everything. Yeah. And mm, as good as no one believes that she, the major force exists. Or knows. Actually, yes. nearly nobody so knows. when she moves out, she lets the curtain drop. Yeah. And for I don't see... actually. Exactly. I don't see an advantage for her in that. Creating the monkeys uh, with, with wings. Cool, why not? Good move. Uh, send them out to attack. Do that. But fly yourself? Why should you? I mean, sure, you are a power that cannot be stopped. No one can stop her. Um, I, I don't... If she could go there alone and just go in and take the relic, no one should be able to stop her. Um, but that is something she never did for multiple reasons. She didn't know where they were and she didn't uh, want to show into the open. I mean, the only reason I could see is, okay... Her interest is the relic. Yes. I don't think she's really interested in Atlas per se. She's interested in the relic, which yes. is there. And yes. she's no, I think she knows that Ruby is there and she has the other relic, which is currently the easiest target. To get two relics at once. Yeah, yeah, yeah I see uh, well, that, yeah. not actually two, but at least Ruby. She doesn't Just know where the, out, second yeah. Ruby, uh, where the second Ruby, um, where the second relic is. Relic is. We don't know where the maiden is, who could open the chamber true, and so on. True. So, but Ruby is currently basically easy. There, there is a, an easy prey, a target. Wait, wait, right. So it it would be if she's the target, I would understand it. But it's right now really the worst. She would have the best chances when she was basically sending out uh, uh, or was, in turn, even mean? earlier, basically right at the beginning, where they when they were saying, I think Hazel was it that Ospin was still alive and that they were headed to. Uh, well, Atlas. she always sent out her henchmen after right. Ruby as so well. If at any point in time. She personal would be moving out. This would have been the time, and to just snatch this this one relic which is on the move. Because right now it was not protected. It was the easiest prey while yes. it was not anywhere near close to city. I guess um I have a theory. I mean we've seen her sending and out Tyrion and Watts. And since so she is Grim, shouldn't she? Relics. Oh, uh, yeah, well. that's an interesting theory. Um, however, she did send out Watts and uh, Tyrion to mm -hmm. Atlas, and that's one or two episodes ago. And the comment that Hazel made when he mm -hmm. saw her transform is, if you want something done right, do it yourself. Do it yourself. Mm -hmm. So what if Hazel, uh, Hazel, what if Watts and Tyrion, whatever they were meant to do, did not complete? What if they screwed up? And we just were not shown it yet, and they showed in the next season, as example. And she's so upset about that, she goes there herself. I mean, there is always this timeline argument, but I, but I don't really feel it it's, mm. it doesn't they, they didn't use that in this 
and it doesn't yeah. feel like it. It feels like a very like linear timelines there. Oh well. Maybe she actually isn't going anywhere. Maybe she's actually she, going to she vacuum. She did something but in the end. The question is what I was actually that? would really like it if she would not go to Atlas but somewhere else. Yeah. This and would really make sense the most because all the this is currently the most defended place. defended place and the most difficult to get there. While I mean there are other relics out there. Yes. Which are currently the least protected. Yes, and uh, that's the thing. She what just needs if, to find out where. What if she's clever and just attacks Vecchio with a huge force, force of Grim, yeah. but not with a, with a... I mean, you could do it two ways. You really try to take out Vecchio, but that's a strong one. I'm not sure if she, even with all the forces she has, is able to really take out the whole kingdom. Um, so, But let's say she tries that. That's her plan. Because Atlas is distracted. Or she mm -hmm. just flies in and terrorizes the landscape, does like a permanent pressure attack over days. And Vecchio is calling for help from Atlas. They have no long range communication. We know that. But mm -hmm. they send out um, scouts there to Atlas and mm -hmm. they arrive and say, we're being attacked by a huge amount of Grimm. And Atlas, there, there are two options what will happen. And both are fine for her. Option one, Atlas says, screw you, we will defend ourselves. The alliance of man is broken. Right. The best thing for her. Other option, Atlas is like, damn it, we have to defend themselves. Uh, them. Let's send half of our fleet or whatever. And they move away. And what's in Tyrion have less to face against in the real mission. Mm -hmm. So that would be a good option Or for actually it. they cause some trouble so Atlas is busy and can't help actually. Yes, or, the, or these, both options. I, I still think that it's the best option or that she should not go to Atlas. I just think yes. it would be really stupid. At the stupid. moment, military it not is, efficient. She is such a strategic mind and this would not a strategic good move for her. Yes, it's just no. That's true. Unless she has, as she had in the first big battle, um this ace in her sleeve that she can, however, take out this fleet again, which we had in the past, the virus. Um, but I don't see that will such kind of a virus will work again because they had this problem. They will for sure have had countermeasures by now. Which leads me to speculating. We are in Atlas now and I am waiting for Penny and I'm waiting for her father, the, you know, Chris Kringle, mm -hmm. the, the Christmas, uh, some Christmas or whatever you want to call him. <laughs> um, I mean, he looked like that. So we know that he is a member of Atlas. And um, yeah, uh, and seeing a that we well had known one. Yes. And seeing that we had kind of a return of Pyrrha in the meaning of she was back in the story. Yeah. I really expect the next season that we have a bow somehow to Penny. Penny yeah. um, Possible. And that she was... Um, an artificial intelligence as she was created, it is possible that we see either an earlier version of her or a new version of her, which... Maybe even the same version, but repaired. Yes. The question is, can they, however, get her information, her, let's call it soul, her uh, whatever yeah. back in? I mean, if they were it able to... Sense. Yeah, if they were able to collect her body, mm -hmm. the, uh, I mean, she was just ripped apart. She was not um, completely vaporized or anything. She was just cut into pieces. Um, so, yes, she was dead at this moment. The question is, can you get only her memory back if they rescued the body? Or can you get really her identity back mm. in the meaning of her memories and I feelings? I mean, it was said, Ruby. I think, that the, the identity was unable to be saved. But, yes. well, we never know. I mean, she was already acting out of what she was programmed for. Yes. So, who knows? Uh, I so. mean, this will also, I think this is also what would fit in in this whole interesting idea where you draw the line between slaves and, and, and you know, like, like what is a worthy uh, existence or, or uh, being. Like the faunas are already like, okay, these are our slaves. And I could imagine that, you know, robots are like our tools. So this would fit in into this whole potential Another party situation. in the same discussion, yeah. yeah. And it, it it just fits in because okay there we have like uh, I mean these are themes which are already nicely uh, or are real or were existent in our, in our society world, yes. in our world now society but slavery and now we will have sooner or later have the discussions about artificial the intelligence artificial self learning self reproducing yeah. machines and, and where yeah. we draw the line of okay when is this actually like a sentient an, being. Yeah, a sentient being, right. Yeah. And this is I they this would be a very nice way to combine this whole 
topic and how similar this topic actually is if you look at it. Yeah. Okay. So Penny, that's the one thing. Um, I expect for sure we will have General Ironwood. I expect uh, the Schnee family in yeah, full force. Family. I, th I expect some form of resistance. Uh, uh, not like the White Fang, but I mean... Slavery. Yeah, there sure, uh, there sure has to be. Uh, uh, there sure clearly has to be some underground uh, resistance mm -hmm. against mm -hmm. if you have such a strong arist aristocracy and the way we have seen him portrayed by now. Mm -hmm. um, there are some good in them, but there are not many of them. So most of them are this uh, nose in the clouds, uh, very fitting with the city. <laughs> um, so when you behave like that, there has to be people working against you. Um, Maybe we will finally see. Yes, that's what I'm waiting for as well, hoping for. Um, hopefully, because it was shown, we will see a little bit background about um, Ruby's mother as well. Um, yeah, in general, a lot of Schnee family will be the topic, including her big sister, I guess. Um, and well, the well, brother. I'm, oh, I really look forward to yeah, the, brother. the brother. Oh, that but will I be fun. I, I, I actually don't think that we will see the sister. I think the sister is somewhere else. He is not in She's gone Atlas. from the story very long already. Yeah, yeah but didn't true. they also say she is not in Atlas? True. They said I it. think, yes, I, I, uh, that might be. Oh, well, exclamations, you know. They can <laughs> vary. Um, s seeing that we haven't had her completely in this season, the question is if there will be a reappearing of Raven. It could be that she's in it. Yeah. A reappearance of Raven? I don't think so, sure. Somehow, I don't think that she is fitting in right now. I mean, in the end, you don't need her for the storyline right now. Um, What I think is that Ospin will somehow... That's what was hinted. That... I mean, we, we, were, hint, uh, it, we were hinted in this uh, season that Oscar is afraid of being... That, that he doesn't have much yes. time left. Yes. And at the same time, we had this kind of... Uh, lie, like... Uh, how you say that? Uh... That he is saying, hey, he is watching over us. And he was kind of like uh, feeling sympathy for Aspen, you know, like yes. like a positive attitude that this is somehow a hint that the next season will be where the fusion, where they will become one oh, okay. and not be separate anymore. Sure. I think this is a hint there that this will probably happen. I mean, they, uh, yeah, apart from that, they still have one more question towards Jin, which they can use for whatever. Um, yeah, the gin situation is. I, I'm not. I'm, I'm actually not sure how I, sh I should feel about this. If the gin was aware that she was not using a question, she would. It have. was against the grim, however. It was. I mean, she said it was clever, but I was like, it. It. It, <laughs> it felt a bit like okay, this she, was just that was to a be cheap put trick. Her, it was it put, a cheap trick to put her in again. I don't think it would have actually yeah. been. Yeah. But it just means they still have this question. So in the next season, we can mm. look if there's like a major question that needs to be Will answered. We finally, see the next artifact. Will yeah, we that's finally the see the, the next maiden. We will still have no idea who she is and where yeah. she is. Yeah, true. Because, yeah, they traveled now to Atlas. You know what? Yeah, exactly. I mean, they brought, uh, they went there for multiple reasons to go for the relic, which they don't know how to access yet. But it's very, very likely that Ironwood knows who the man is. I mean, is. didn't they say? Didn't wasn't it Ospin who said they need to go to Atlas now? Yes, he was the origin, but he didn't say clearly why. Well, it's it's the best defended place, so you want to have the relic there that you have. The other thing is, um, I guess Os knows or expects. Ironwood to know who the maiden is because the military military controlled so much there, and this relic was always um, in the in the uh, academies, and the academy in Atlas is part of the military, and I... headmaster of the academy and general of the army is Ironwood, so he I... has to know who the maiden uh, is. I don't think so. I, this would be too much power. This was especially you put someone in charge to protect the chamber. But not knowing who the maiden is is an extra security. Uh, I think the opinion. only one who is knowing the maidens is Ospin. I don't think that anyone else is knowing that. Mm, okay. We will see. This would be so much power. And what would keep Ironwood away from using it in the moment when he Yeah, needs that's it? true. Yeah, having a military who has access to one of the relics. Yeah, I see your point. Especially 
I I already forgot what the one in Atlas is, but um, I mean, there's not so much left. It wasn't creation, creation was it? Just, was I, it? I think we, we speculated that it was creation. It was not said clearly which is where. I think there was a list about. Oh, whatever. Um, so yeah, I see the point. Um, I because think we had... all other relics are dangerous. Clearly, it's creation, it's destruction, and it's oh, free will. Oh, wait, free wait, will did... is so fitting for Atlas right now. <laughs> I think free will is fitting for vacuum. No, but due to the what, the discussion we had, because True. there is no the, the is free no will free is will. a real problem in Atlas right now. That would be so fitting if they would have access to this. We had learning. a list of that. We had, and I uh, the, I think I threw it away. However, anything else? After credit scene, so. we discussed. So the monkey, for those who don't know, Wizard of Oz, the evil witch of the uh, East, West, I'm uh, East. East. I think it was the East, has flying monkeys. So that was that was like oh to, yeah. Salem needs to be turning green. <laughs> That's another. Who knows? Green with oh. uh, envy. Um, nah. I think that's nah. it for this time. Nah. Yeah. If we were, if you forgot something, the comment section will. Remind matter. us for sure. So um, I like this season in general. It was um, good. It was better than the last season um, uh, by far. We had a lot of really good and up episodes. We had some downers as well. So we had a weak episode mm. in the middle, I think. For me, it had a very strong start. It had, and then somehow it separated. We yes. had some very good writing, and at the same time, some other sections in the were... same episode. So yeah, it was pretty. So so kind of saying okay, it was good or bad is kind of depending on where you look at. I don't want to say it was so so or in the middle because it kind of was not. But yeah, I really was... have two separate. If you could leave out the whole section, then it's good. Yes. If you leave the other section out, it was it not not in my taste. Depending on the on the uh, storyline on the arc. Um, which characters were involved yeah. it was good or bad. And I, I agree, it's possibly that they have different writer teams here. Um, but then there is this thing that there, I always have to remind that there are people out there who really, really like stuff that I'm like, what the heck? And there's stuff that I like where other people are but like, no, It's man. actually pretty rare that I have like in the same episode and even in multiple episodes, two story arcs where I'm saying like, this is great and this is garbage. This is very rarely happening. Yeah, this is really mix. like that. This that it is so far apart for me. This is rare. Usually, it's one or the other. Saying that there, there normally is something like lead writer who mm -hmm. um, has the uh, who overview. has the hat, and then he puts it together, and this person has to watch it and say, "Is it fitting Works. to each other?" And right. this was a bit missing. Um, this, this, this is what it really is. Uh, this very this it didn't had that feeling in the previous seasons this is yes. the first season where i really had that there seems to be really not an overhead who is watching that the quality is consistent constant yeah on, consistent. on one level that's true um however still uh, as i said i think in general a really good season um uh, not top notch no question there uh, but clearly not the bad at all. The animation got better, a lot oh, yes, better. Yeah. We can say that the whole. I mean, look at this picture. This looks good. I it love looks drawn. That. It looks. I mean, especially the lower part. It looks a lot like this was the, hand drawn. This is space. This is definitely the biggest jump on the quality level they yes. they had so far. So this is this is definitely. Yeah. So looking forward to the next season as always. So possibly in some months. Season 7 coming up. We will see. And until then, feel free to comment, subscribe, like, whatever you like. That's Share it. Share your thoughts. Yeah. Leave the hate against me because nah. I'm the downer, the negativity. <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, so that's it. <sighs> My name is Relax and Panic. And I am most evil life form. Goodbye and out. Bye.